Riding the rails west. This train is a model of an old steam locomotive at the Golden Spike National Historic Site in Utah. Workers take a break from building a cross-country railroad. Why did people want to go west? In 1825, the first railroad came to the United States. As a result, people discovered that taking a train was a much faster kind of transportation than riding a horse or taking a wagon. 25 years later, a network of railroads connected towns and cities on the east coast. Unfortunately, there was no quick way to travel to the west coast. The trip took months. In 1841, the first pioneers rode and covered wagons from Missouri to farmland in Oregon. Then, in 1849, gold was discovered in California. Thousands of miners rushed to California to look for gold. The trip across the country by wagon was hard, long, and dangerous. People wanted a safer and more comfortable way to travel. Business people wanted a quicker way to move goods. As a result, the government began thinking about building a new rail line. This railroad would connect the whole country. Building a railroad. In 1862, President Abraham Lincoln and Congress agreed that a railroad should be built to connect east and west. They picked two companies to lay the train tracks. One company started laying tracks in Sacramento, California, and went east. The other company started in Omaha, Nebraska, and went west. The tracks had to cross nearly 2,000 miles of dry plains, desert, and mountains. Laying tracks was hard, back-breaking work. Often, the weather was not agreeable. Workers had to be capable of working long hours in cold, heat, and storms. Most of the railroad workers were from China. They had come to the United States seeking a better life. They risked their lives to help America build the railroad. A faster way to go. On May 10, 1869, the tracks were joined at Promontory Point, Utah. The new railroad made emigration easier. By wagon train, the trip from Missouri to California had taken five months. Now, a trip across the country by train took about nine days. As the result, people traveling west appreciated the railroads. Trains also carried mail and goods. Cities grew along the railroad's routes. People built businesses and factories. Transcontinental Railroad. This map shows where two railroad lines joined to make cross-country train travel possible. Railroad owners drove in a gold spike where the tracks from east and west met. As workers watched, they shook hands. The population boomed in western states, and the United States economy grew as people moved westward to the Pacific. The immigrants who took the Transcontinental Railroad have many descendants in the west. Today, the descendants mainly use another kind of vehicle. They travel by car. But thanks to the Transcontinental Railroad, many people are living in California today. Trains keep us moving. Trains are still important in the United States. Each year, trains carry millions of tons of goods across the country. Coal is the most important product they carry. Coal is used to make energy to power factories and heat homes. Without railroads to carry the coal, factories would close and homes would be cold. Many people also ride trains to get to their jobs or to travel across country. Trains make less air pollution than cars and they don't cause traffic jams. Trains are here to stay. Today, trains carry everything from bricks to coal. Discovering life long ago. In the past, people wrote in diaries and journals. They wrote letters to friends and families. They also wrote autobiographies to tell their life stories. Diaries, journals, and autobiographies tell us what people thought and felt. They also give details about daily life in the past. They describe the food people ate. They tell what kind of transportation they used. Posters, newspapers, and old photographs also give details about events in the past. So do speeches and songs. Photographs show people's clothes and how they had fun. Both words and pictures from the past help us see how people lived long ago. They tell a history of people, places, and things. They take us back in time. This poster was an ad for the Transcontinental Railroad in 1869. A Pioneer's Diary Sally Hester was 14 years old when she traveled west in the wagon train in 1849. She kept a diary. You can read a part of it below. What details about emigration can you learn from Sally's diary? Spring, 1849. When we camp at night, we form a corral with our wagons and pitch our tents on the outside. Inside of this corral, we drive our cattle with guards stationed on the outside of the tents. We have a portable table, tin plates and cups, cheap knives and forks, camp stools, etc. We live on bacon, ham, rice, dried food, molasses, packed butter, bread, coffee, tea, and milk, as we have our own cows. In the 1840s, thousands of families moved west to Oregon and California in covered wagons.